Good morning, AV Addicts. Uh, today it's going to be a bit of a mishmatch of bits and pieces that we're going to talk about. Um, we've done a lot of work on the tail plane, sorry, the tail part of the fuselage, and also uh, I wanted to show you a bit of the woodwork that goes onto the Hurricane, which hopefully will go on fairly shortly. So let's do this. Okay, what I should have done at the start was actually show you what um, the fuselage numbering system is. Because you'll find that people with hurricanes will actually, or that know hurricanes, always talk about the joints with in the A, A alphabet. So what you've got is this is the port side of the aircraft, front obviously, this is the aft, and obviously that's the tail. And what you've got is they're lettered. So you've got A, and this is a mirror image on each side. So you've got A, B, C, D, E, F. G, H, they miss out I, so you've then got J, K, L, M, N, O, they don't miss out O for some reason, and then you've got P, Q, and then a little bit we've been working on is this bit at the back, so you've got R, S, T, U. Um, the numbering then bizarrely starts continues on the engine bearer which we'll get into when we get onto the engine bearer so as a sort of rest restore you get various drawings um, which can be helpful so what I've got is that's sort of a, a blow up it, um, picture of the rear fuselage here and you can see all the letters again um, so that's that over the years I've made countless notes um, to try and help myself with it um, and it gets absolutely crazy really so if you were just building a cockpit this is the little section you would build so you've got the engine firewall, frame and firewall box onto here so you've got the A A's and then B and then, as I said before which is good to see, effectively you do A through to G and then you would do B through to H. That would give you the whole cockpit section. And the important bits to note are the A, 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 B, B, that's the firewall and what the en engine bearer goes onto. And C, C is where the control panel is. And then F, E is effectively where the pilot's seat back goes. And then these are the uh, go on to the wing ascent section. So you've got B and F there. That sort of, if you like, the feet that go onto the onto the wing ascent section. Um, yeah, so that's really effectively. And then the end of the doghouse is G to GG, which is where I showed you last time. That the end of the doghouse effectively sits on there. So that's a quick canter through that. As I said, we'll get onto the engine bearer fairly soon um, and then see how we get on with that. I've had the joints in a, a Barty built hamber, which is a rust eater. Um, it's really good, to be honest. Uh, I use it a lot. It's less uh, unfriendly, as it were, than, than bead blasting or shot blasting. Um, we talked about a little bit about the joints, the fuselage joints, so this is from the Vol 1, which is the parts manual, which is about 4 inches thick. Very, very useful bit of kit, really. So what you've got here is you've got each of the joints. These are the bracing wires. So this is joint O. So if we... Let's, let's just pop back to our little drawing here. So we're going to look at... Uh, yeah, let's look at joint O. So with joint O... Right, so this is joint O. Um, so what you've got is you've got, this is OO, which goes between the two O's. Um, and then you've got, these are lugs for the bracing wires that you see. And there's one there, so you've got three bracing wires come off joint O. And they help uh, true up the aircraft once you've got the datum lines in position. We'll be filling the da datum points to the various tubes fairly shortly, so that we can actually get the aircraft properly lined up and datumed so we can actually more or less build it true if we can so if you were to look on the other side of O you'd see something very similar to this plate 
but upside down obviously because that's down the bottom so that's that's effectively what the joints are um yeah i think that's probably enough for the time being and uh we'll crack on uh with the next job so uh, hopefully that will give you a good old canter around uh, how the aircraft is actually built one last thing probably just to say a quick bit about is that the tubes are incredibly difficult to make if you've got a square on each side not a problem but when you get to the longer runs the longer run we were working on in this video goes from the top ones that go from G through to R that long long run so you can see there's one two three four five six squares so it's a round tube and each time place where you've got a joint you have a square that's a lot of effort and quite a difficult job to do so I was really pleased to be able to reuse them um, so it breaks there you've got uh, the bottom longer runs are actually made in two sections you've got a short section with one two three joints on it which goes from H to M um, which are for our aircraft are quite good condition um, one's perfect original and the other ones from LF363 um, which was one of the Battle of Memorial flights that uh, had to have a huge rebuild following a en engine issue and crash landing in the 90s at RF Wittering or force landing I should say the longer part goes from M so you've got a joint there uh, and a joint in the tube but the tube isn't joined it's actually joined at the joint M so you go M O Q S so that's the last one so that's got one two three four four squarings on it anyway I think that's enough of the tube business for the time being so what we'll do is we'll just get on with the jobs in hand so since the last video uh, we have basically almost but finished the rear 18 inches to two foot that looks fairly good so as I said it's upside down so this is the where the tail wheel goes and you've got various struts that strengthen the tail wheel there and the that give it added strength so lots to do as usual okay AV addicts uh, hmm like usual I couldn't stick to just one job so I started to get these longer runs done because I've been putting it off for three days so what we're looking at doing is the red ones are the ones I want to use they're totally original they're not brilliant spacers are still in them which is good they take a lot of effort to float especially when you've got seven or so square joints going down the fuselage that you have to um, line up so what I've done is as I said before this is um, joint G that's where joint G goes so this is the upper longer arm and that's joint J so what I've done is I've put bolts through to line these up but I now need to cut uh, the um, this section we're letting in so basically I've just gone down to all of them so there's joints G then J then L then N P and then finally R at the end R is where um, it goes on to my nice bit of tail section that you've seen recently. The whole idea is that if I can get the upper longer runs done, the lower longer runs done, I can then basically jig it to the back of the fuselage, then put in all the datums to make sure it's all straight. So the next job we've done is, you'll see this is the new longer run that had the error on it. So I've chopped off a lump, I put an inner sleeve. There are two ways of repairing these in the theater. There was uh, how the Russians did it on this one, where they've effectively put a outer sleeve. And what I'm doing is I'm putting an inner sleeve. And then the idea will be to drill holes through the original outer, outer uh, uh, um, longer on as it were, and then weld in, get one of my good friends to weld it and, and it should be true and it'll basically be a spot weld in various places. So let's see if we can do the next thing which is mark where we need to cut the original tube which I really am not looking forward to. Well that wasn't as horrific as I thought it might be so what we've done now 
is I have just put that letting in new piece effectively on it. So there you have it. So now we need to drill some holes in the original longer on here and here and here and here, oh, sorry, in the new bit and then also in the old bit up to this joint. Just drill some holes in the outer bit, put it back together again, line it all up properly and then get um, it welded and also get it kiss welded around there as well. That should, says he, do it, which would be great news. Um, and then it'll be ready to actually start bolting, put, adding the original joints. So I think a cup of coffee is called for. I would not exist without coffee, but anyway, here we go. Okay, so now we are ready for welding. So you'll see that I put these holes in, in the outer tube, put a really tight fitting tube on the inside. And then what we're also going to do is we put a line up marking there and then we're going to weld right the way around it. That's what we'll do. And I'm also going to just put a bit of tape on there. So we weld the holes first and then we fill the weld in the middle. So next time, hopefully it'll be welded. So here we are. We've now had it welded and I've just buzzed it up. So that's the, if you like the old bit, here's the joins. That's the join there. And then effectively what we've done is we just put some spot welds on each side further up. So I think that's quite an elegant uh, fix to be honest. Okay, so it's been a fruitful day. Basically the long ones are now the two that we will use for the upper longer ones. I've drilled the holes for J straight the way through, but I haven't for G because I just want to make sure everything's going to go okay with that. Okay, I think that's enough for today. The Hurricane has a tubular framework and the shape of the rear fuse large is all given through frames that go down the sides, round the bottom and up the top. So these are the, if you like, the spine, the spine frames. Um, I've put them all together here to keep them safe, but uh, what we'll do is we'll go through them later and, and uh, or probably another video and show you them. Uh, down on the bottom you have belly panels, which is effectively what this chappy is here. So obviously it's uh, mounted uh, the wrong way around. So what we'll do is we'll get it out and show it to you um, now. So this is the lower belly panel and it's mounted upside down on the floor here so I can show you it. Uh, forgive the mess, there's, uh, we've got a bit of a shortage of space at the moment so this Mustang um, main wheel gets in the way. But you should be able to see the um, it's quite recognisable. This is the original woodwork from Last of the Many, um, which I was very lucky to acquire in the swap with the Battle Britain Memorial Flight back in the 80s. So what you've got here is this is where the tail wheel would go. So your tail wheel will go there. So that's the under belly panel. And what we'll do now is just turn it around and have a look at the other side. So you can see all the work that goes into it. There's lots of steam um, uh, formed parts down the bottom there to give it that sort of ventral strake that you get on the bottom of the later Hurric well, later Mark 1s. And what you've got here, so I'm showing it, Point properly, that's joint Q. So what you've got there is you've got a bar that goes across that joint Q, and that's where you actually can jack the aircraft up. So that's what the cutout is there. At this stage, I've got to thank my good friend Julian Mitchell, who basically need used my, mine for patterns for various hurricanes, including his own. And uh, he, um, as part of doing that, he was very kind and uh, rebuilt my panels as well. So that's what you see here. What we'll do is we'll look at other panels as part of um, other blogs as well later. Well, thanks very much for watching this second vlog. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, sorry it's a bit mix and match and a little bit uh, different and hectic. I managed to do quite a lot in that day and uh, obviously we're trying to bring some of it to you um, so you can come along with the story. Anyway, if you liked it, please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, as usual, if I had any comments uh, on it and anything you might uh, want us to hone in on or focus on so that you get more out of it. Cheers and fly safely.